the vision of the rehabilitation, resuscitation, call it what you will, of the Jamaica Railway, and perhaps resuscitation is perhaps the <coughs> real word, relates to the fact that the vision that I have for transport is an integrated multimodal form of transport. It equally relates to the um, world itself as the world um, evolves back through the process of movement of goods and services. And therefore the timing is very important. But that timing is equally tied to a history. <coughs> It's tied to the history in the sense that this is the second oldest railway in the world. It's tied to the history that one must put in perspective the impact that the railway had on the world and by extension how it arrived in Jamaica. In that context it came along and was built in seven different franchises which related to the banana industry. I think many people forget that the banana was called green gold. That green gold context made it known how important the banana industry, that's available in a book too, I think it's written by Leslie Goff, when banana was king. And therefore one would find that because of the growing and the development of Jamaica in an absentee landlord kind of structure, and where the ports were important, and the timing of the banana from being cut to being put on a ship to arriving in Europe, where it would ride on its way there, spoke to the time and it spoke to timing and the interconnectivity of timing. A part of my own approach lies in the fact that I think we have not overcome the fact that we need to rehabilitate ourselves from an exploitative aspect of developed countries and therefore the whole plantocracy, slavery, impacts itself on my own thinking. In that context, however, that the railway is very important to any development that must relate to a country. So the history of the railway, and for the young people I remind you that what it then said was, when James Watt invented the engine, they said the human body could not withstand the speed of 34 miles per hour. Um, so you put that in context, put it in the context of an iPhone, put it in the context when we were told you need 24 inches of cement and if you walk too near the computer it would shake. Um, so <clears throat> in my approach I'm in the Jews were in context of the molecular assembly and disassembly. Okay? But the important thing is that no country can really grow on the basis of one form of transport. And again, if you went back to the history of the world, you recognize what I'm speaking to. The world had, was considered flat, so that the Silk Road of China and the camels along the desert, which opened up the trade routes of the east to west, when you arrived at the frontier of the sea, any of those seafarers then were taught they'd fall off into abyss if they started to sail. They sailed around the globe. You discovered the world was wrong. You discovered it, it, it revolved. And after you had done that, now you had to look at the air and you decide how do you conquer the air because you realize you had to interconnect the world. So the Wright brothers invented the plane. If Jamaica and its produce, sugar, banana, rum, so much, built Europe in many ways, then what we should do is never allow to die the railway, which was the main form of communications, which covers all, the four, all but two parishes are covered in Jamaica. Any analysis would recognize that any government that closed and failed to make the railway work made people live more along road corridors, made more live along river corridors, and didn't really cope with like the hinterland for people for development. Therefore, I inherited a transport program which excluded the railway, and I think it's to the, um, <clears throat> the detriment of the country, and I think it's an indictment of the previous government. Because what happens now is that your building, even the toll road contract was given out, you shouldn't expand the railway. Now that to me is fifth world exploitative thinking in relation to it. It should never have been accepted. Well, we are going to overcome that. 
So the basic point is now how do you integrate someone to want to make a choice? Can I ride my bicycle safely? Can I ride my bicycle to the bus station or the train station? Certainly the bus doesn't take it quite as easily. You go to the train, you arrive at a place, you have a bicycle, you move on. Goods and services, taking heavyweight vehicles off the road, a safe way of communicating and moving around. And you can combine any of the five elements of the infrastructure that already exists. Therefore, what this real aim of the railway is, it showed that it existed for an industrial need, so bauxite was carried. We gave licenses to bauxite companies to build lines where we didn't have line. But we abandoned it from carrying our own cargo, carrying our passengers, which really is an integrated way that you should have been looking at it. So that I decided that the railway has five elements of value, transference of data, cargo, passengers, heritage tourism, and of course the bauxite which it is carried. With the resuscitation too of the sugar industry now, I'm being asked, can we again go back? Sugar cane carts on the roads are damaging the roads, knocking down light poles. Therefore, it was a short-sighted vision of transport. So when you look at the railway, and I've not been interested in this merely as minister. Indeed, I had someone who painted on all of the stations before they were destroyed. And their names alone suggest the issues that you have to deal with. And in my own time, I've traveled the railway too, and I love traveling by the rail anywhere in the world. And as you can see, countries expand the rail. It's more a matter of whether it's diesel, whether it's electric, what have you, overall. Now for Jamaica and me, the railway is perhaps the major link in my integrated multimodal transport. I have said that the world today needs a sea air connection. And the only country that comes close to that is Singapore. I lived in Singapore um, from the early development of Singapore um, in the 60s to recent times. The basic point relates is that we must build that sea air connection. And I'm setting out on a path for Jamaica of building what is a country sea air connection. The opening of the Panama Canal is going to be the most futuristic impact on the world, and people still don't recognize it. I can reflect on that on the basis that the man who thought of connecting two oceans, the Atlantic and the Pacific, must have been considered like James Watt, a madman, you know. Um, but he connected them. Right now, however, the major ships being built have to go around the Cape of Good Hope. They cannot come through. Jamaica, where it's placed now, close to the equator in terms of a triangle can deliver goods and services two to four days earlier than anywhere else in the world. Therefore, that is why I link the port and the railway to Burnham Field as a development. So that the railway runs right into the port as we speak, near the Mataba Bridge, and the railway runs right into Burnham Field. So the concept of large ships coming in to go break all goods, the just-in-time concept of the world, the impatience of youth wanting things today and not tomorrow, relates to the fact that people must begin to get their goods and services near to one point, that they can satisfy demand as it happens. Today you don't manufacture in isolation, you manufacture in an interconnected way. For instance, you could manufacture a car today by the engine in Germany, the body in, 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 in South Africa, the wheels in um, another part of South America, and by your communications and timing, you start the production of the wheel, you start the production of the engine, you start the production of the body. They arrive in a container at Jamaica, you assemble them as somebody wants. So that basically it's a just-in-time world in a placeless society. So the train has its, its aspect now by its own development. So in Jamaica, we would still think of the train by the outdated engines I have, which is historical value, of the coaches that I'm trying to rehabilitate with no money um, overall. But then you see I rode on the bullet train in China a few weeks, months ago, and I arrived from my hotel to the airport in, I think, five minutes. Eh? Um, therefore, if you speeded up the train, 
made it run on rubber, we use levitated. You, you develop all of that, depending on what it is. So I'm not trying try to confine the developmental plan, and I equally think we have to raise the vision. But the real vision now is a big ship comes into the port, it comes in a container, this container is offloaded right onto the railway car, um, a little bit better than when we used to sing Deo Deo and Deo de Bananas, um, but let's own it for ourselves this time. Put it on the train car, take it to Vernon Field, Vernon Field will be built to accommodate the A380, which accommodates the Anatol, the largest um, freighter in the world, and therefore you break bulk now, and then you also add the dimension of earnings, which comes from labeling, etc., 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 and building that so that the railway becomes an integral part of that development. Then you have the heritage tourism. Um, you have, you know, I'm working hard on the rum tour. We we'll work on the Clarendon Express. People have stolen the lines, but you could have think yourself because we tend to not bridge history. So the train ran from Pleasant Valley, which is the birthplace of Herb McKinley, our first gold medalist. So somebody should want to go to see where Herb McKinley came, who must have influenced Bolt to be who he is today. Come down through Denby Showground, go on out into Rocky Point to watch the Bauxite off lower. That's a whole new area that can be run or leased by anyone. The aspect I've always had in mind, a Jamaican Orient Express. There should be no reason why you don't leave Kingston. It takes three nights to get to Montego Bay, served in whatever way. That's something somebody can invest in. But the railway will reopen two or three. It will socially reintegrate Jamaica in many ways. It's the concept that I have. The concept of what I mean by that. At the moment, we have allowed, allowed transport to develop in catch as catch can. You buy any vehicle, you become a taxi operator, a taxi operator, no bus runs on time, the roads aren't built around on time. So the first concept of the railway is time. So one shouldn't talk about whether it's going to take away from taxis, integrate with taxis, is what I really want. Because the train cannot leave at 8, cannot be leave at 8.30, to be sitting and waiting until you fill every coach. It's got to leave at 8.30. So the essence of time becomes important to the country which doesn't have a real essence of time in my considered opinion. And therefore now, your children can also travel much more safely and much more quickly to school. Because if we looked at it and we would see some of how the absence of the train has impacted on disorder in transportation. The first disorder is we don't know what is a taxi. And if you want to get the train at 8.30, because you want to get to Catadupa by changing a connection rather than hiring a taxi for $10,000 to take you or changing and hoping you can have the taxi drop you at the train station at 8.30 you need another taxi when you come on. And then, as I said, the most important aspect of that in terms of the general population is the way we have our school children traveling to school. Firstly, you have an imbalance in the cost of transport because you subsidize the transport in the KMTR region for $80. But in the rural areas, and rural starts as much as Old Harbor, it's four to $500 for your child daily to go to school. Five times that is above the minimum wage. Therefore, you're going to lose educational time too. So, the idea is that we're not taking from one. The railway and its historical and environmental and social and, and uh, meets all the needs. My process is to integrate it, to expand it, and to be able to re have it running to all the parishes of Jamaica. The immediate plan is to run the lines that can accommodate. The train can run right now from Williamsfield all the way to Yorkton, and it can run all the way to Montego Bay. We just have to replace some lines for the rights of way exits. It cannot come into Kingston for the next nine to 12 months because we have to build a bridge across Sandy Valley which cannot take the weight and would need to be repaired just like we had to do for the Maypen Bridge. 
and it then can run once we do the, the and it can run right now from Spanish Town to Gregory Park, and therefore serve Port. So those areas, it's going to have a great problem to wait on time going all the way to Portland, because that's the most vandalized line, and of course it's a different terrain. That would be in a cycle of two to three years plan. So it's a phase plan development opening up for investment. And the elements of investment can be leased in any way, can be created in any way overall. So, as you have said, the nostalgia is great. We have carried now, I think, 25 to 30,000 passengers in the 10 days. Wow. What that is is in relation, what that is in relation to who is traveling it because it's the first time and who is traveling every day is another issue that we have to go through. The basic point is I'm working as an alternative and an integrated form of transportation. I'm saying that you're going to have different levels of service. You will have, and again, it's educational in relation to how aeroplanes fly. Do you have a premium service where you can get coffee and a dining car and you read your paper? Um, you have a gold service at another level, silver service, and an economy, fair structure. Um, so basically, it's an uphill task for me because no one has been closed down. I am rehabilitating from scrap, so to speak. I'm respraying, redoctoring, reapproaching. And the railway's assets have been pretty much exploited by the previous operations and government. What do I mean by that? We have a lot of land that has been leveraged and used wrongly. The railway was the largest landowner. When I came and took over, it had 400 million on the book. I think we reached 4 billion now. And trying to identify all that land, we own Rodney's Arms. Rodney's Arms is very much far away from what it is overall. So all of that land analysis has to be done. And the identification of the asset structure and then we decide in terms of it whether we are corporatizing or privatizing, um, joint venturing, what have you. So what I'm trying to do is recognize the value because part of my criticism of where we are before is that we have allowed the people's assets to be treated with very a great degree of um, indignity and responsibility. I think the railway has great value to the country. I think it offers a great way to socially reintegrate people. I think it opens up the hinterland and therefore will reduce some of that living that people move along the roads and the high cost of them reclaiming those areas. And um, I hope now, for instance, you know, this is the only country where people advertise housing is for sale and are trying to track you, but I don't tell you you know, that you're close to the railway station, close to the bus station, close to the hospital, close to the school, you know. Um, therefore, the disorder and the structure. So I hope I've given you as wide an overall situation of where you want to go, where I'm going with the railway. Um, phase one is what it is overall. We can run those. Can we run them economically? I'm, I'm instructed I must not make it a charge on the budget. Um, I'm looking for investment capital because I believe it's one of the best investments that could be made in the country. And the investment can run in different avenues, different areas. Um, we have plans for a museum. We have, because it's the second oldest, you have people who want to ride on the train as it was those hundreds of years ago because there's a whole market of what they call railway buffs in the world and train spotters and what have you. So I will make all of that rule out in a dimension. So for the moment, I'm happy to see young people who never knew. I found that it gave me a great deal of pride to a lot of young people. I've met them recently who said they can now call overseas and say I can ride the train. Um, you know, uh, we have a train too. And, um, Therefore, within that context, and in any case, that's what I'm seeking to do, to re-raise the pride of Jamaicans and the vision, to let them recognize that we were never fifth class where a lot of people wanted to take us, right? And indeed, we built Britain with a great deal of that. 
Britain still owes us for reparations and I still intend to make them pay for that over on. But the basic point is that, you know, if you look on it and what we have done, the vision of Garvey, right? Um, then you recognize that really what we have to do is re-raise that. That's what I think the whole aspect of it is about, for me, and a great deal of satisfaction. And if the young people are happy with it, because the only way I can really, quote unquote, win the battle with the railway, right, is to have people on the side of recognizing that it's not separate and apart, it's not antagonistic to one, it's an integrated form of travel, which any civilized developed country will do. And nobody's going to run anything at a loss. So if the train is taking you somewhere at a loss, it's going to close ultimately. But I think it's important that somebody could now know if I'm going from Kingston, I want to get to Catadouco. I can leave Kingston at 10 or 8 in the evening, catch the 9 o'clock connection somewhere, get home then, and grab a taxi now to my yard. So and this is how I know civilized societies are structured. And as I said, you can have the train running on time. And you are paying $80 and the man up front is paying $500 at another level. You're both getting at the same place at the same time, and hopefully not with exactly the same comfort, but in the same style anyway. So that's it, and I'm working hard to rehabilitate and to make it work, okay? Stage by stage, we have no stations, many places. I've got to rebuild them, I've got to find the investors or the investment. But that's what it's all about. It's all about history, connectivity, development, plans, where you want to go and where you don't want your children to be left behind and to feel they're part of it. So basically that's that's it for me.